Absolutely no one's talking about this new chat GPT GPT 4.0 update. It's actually, I think now, an answers engine, right? There was all these rumors about, hey, ChatGPT, OpenAI, they're going to come out with a search engine. Uh, they didn't, but they actually had some huge improvements with the way that it browses the internet, gathers information, and I think it's, uh, in some instances, as good as something like perplexity. No one's talking about it. All right, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. If you're new here, what's going on? My name is Jordan Wilson. I'm the host of The Thing on the Right Side there, uh, Everyday AI. We're a daily live stream podcast and free daily newsletter helping everyday people like you and me learn and leverage generative AI. So uh, please like this video, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know in the comments is that if this is helpful. But what we're doing here, we're going to try to do this live. We essentially have three different uh, pretty basic um, kind of questions here that we're going to go over. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger on the screen. So essentially, we're going to ask, what is the latest news with Microsoft in terms of generative AI and large language models? We're going to ask, uh, what are the most valuable companies in the US right now by market capitalization? And then for fun, we're going to do something a little off topic and say, what teams are left in the 2024 NBA finals? So this isn't uh, exactly an apples to apples comparison, but I think a lot of people are missing some of these under the hood updates that chat GPT actually did with how, um, the new model GPT 4.0 uses browse with Bing. No one's talking about it. It's actually, I think extremely powerful. I've been, uh, pretty harsh on browse with Bing in the past. Is it still ideal? Absolutely not. Is it much, much better in a way that's starting to work like an answers engine? Yeah. All right. So we're going to try to do this live. So what we're going to do here is we're going to grab this first one. Okay. This first question. So I'm going to get it ready. Um, so I know, so, uh, how these work. So I haven't done this yet. I'm doing it live. So I'm going to go ahead on the right hand side and take away the using browse with Bing. That's the only difference I'm going to do. All right. So technically we're going to give perplexity a little bit of a head start because normally what happens when you use perplexity pro is it asks you a clarifying question. So I'm going to start that process first. Then I'm going to go ahead and click the, uh, chat GPT four O. And again, this is free right now. This model, um, you know, 4.0, which stands for Omni, uh, which is essentially one model that kind of sees, uh, talks, listens, understands reasons. It's, it's kind of wild. Um, but th that's the only difference. So we're going to kind of give perplexity a little bit of a head start, uh, because it, we know it's going to ask us a clarifying question to give us hopefully a better answer. Um, so this is just to show you how powerful, uh, and I think that open AI is going to be turning into an, an, an answers engine here. All right. So let's go ahead. We're going to do this live in, in real time. Um, let's go ahead and give it a try. Here we go. So you'll see here it's understanding the question. Okay. So sometimes it asks me uh, a clarifying question. In this case, it did not. Uh, something else to keep in mind is right now, uh, I'm sure chat GPT's, uh, new model is just getting swamped. Uh, so yeah, right now it's not even, uh, it's not even working, uh, which is interesting. Hey, that's why we always do these live. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try this one more time. There we go. So now it's working. Uh, so the first time it didn't work. Hey, uh, typical, right? So here's, here's what I, uh, what is pretty impressive. So look, once it did go, and again, uh, I'm, I'm sure right now open AI is getting slammed, uh, in terms of traffic, right? It normally does. Uh, but look at how good of a job it did. So a couple of things that no one is talking about. Uh, so about a month and a half, two months ago, uh, OpenAI changed the way that it sources information. So now it actually gives you sources and links. So we'll see here, uh, it did something very similar to how perplexity works now. So if we look over here on the right-hand side, yes, perplexity went to more sources and it gives you those in a list. So it looks like it went to, uh, 20 total sources. That's generally what it does. However, do you really need 20 sources? I mean, in some cases it's absolutely helpful. I usually think usually three to six sources is a good enough amount to get a variety, uh, accuracy and kind of different, different viewpoints, right? So that's something that you this is this brand new update uh, from OpenAI's uh, GPT-4.0 model that no one's talking about. Uh, generally, it didn't tell you what it searched. So sometimes it would cite things, sometimes it didn't. But now guess what? Now we have this very familiar looking 
kind of answer engine where you can drop this down. So uh, yes, about a month and a half ago, OpenAI did improve the citation, but generally uh, you would normally get, unless you explicitly ask for it, you wouldn't really get any citations. Sometimes the citations were broken. If you did ask for it, normally it would provide it, but it would generally only maybe give you one, right? So I, I did a video before where I asked for, you know, top 10 restaurants in Chicago, and it literally just did one, I think, uh, all of them except for one were from one source. So it didn't really act as an answers engine. It just kind of grabbed information from one blog post more or less and threw in one little thing. But here we go. It searched seven different sites, right? Uh, most of them are, you know, Microsoft, but it's still, I did specifically ask for Microsoft news. Uh, so you'll see right there, good example. It didn't fire right away. So technically, uh, I, I think perplexity won in this. Um, so I'm actually going to look at the, the, the quality here. So uh, right away, um, you know, I cover this every day. The, the biggest news that I did ask for, let's see who got what. So I think five, three is, is one of the biggest ones. And that's what, uh, chat GPT led with, uh, perplexity, you know, came with something that is not super relevant, a Microsoft and Coca-Cola strategic partnership. Uh, this, uh, the, the MAI one model is pretty huge. Uh, and that's what we have right here. Uh, chat GPT did not name it by name. I, I, I didn't ask for specifics either. So, uh, I'm sure I would have gotten a little bit different, uh, uh, responses if I did, but you know, if I'm looking side by side here and saying, Hey, which one of these actually answered my question better? Um, I mean, maybe it's a toss up, uh, but it's competing right out of the gate it's competing which is is pretty impressive all right so we're going to go ahead do another search we're going to make these uh, a little quicker this time so this time we're going what are the most valuable companies right now in the us by market capitalization this one we're going to be focusing on accuracy because this changes every day so again i'm going to give perplexity a little bit of a head start ernie you know what this time i'm actually going to give uh gpt 40 a little bit of a head start since i did perplexity last time and we'll see if it actually fires correctly this time all right let's go All right, so let's see who's actually faster here. So perplexity started a little sooner, but look right there. Uh, GPT-4.0 was done faster. All right, so let's see actually who was more accurate. All right, so let's see. We see Microsoft. Let's actually get the correct uh, the correct answers here. So we have Microsoft at just over $3 trillion, Apple 2.8, NVIDIA 2.5, uh, Alphabet 2.1, uh, Amazon one nine. So let's see, uh, we got Amazon one six. So we got, uh, perplexity got the right order. So it's Microsoft, Apple, uh, Nvidia alphabet, Amazon. All right. So now let's see if, uh, if chat GPT got the right, right answer. So Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, oh, let's see Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia alphabet, Amazon. All right. So got it. Got it right. So let's see, uh, 3.0, 2.8, 2.2. So it got NVIDIA's, uh, fairly wrong here. Pretty interesting. Not even close here from, from, uh, chat GPT at 1.2 trillion, um, alphabet to, okay. So chat GPT actually did not do a great job, uh, at finding, uh, the correct values or the correct valuations. Let's see how perplexity did, uh, perplexity. Let's go ahead and move these. Uh, so it looks like perplexity did a much better job in terms of accuracy. So 2.8. So yeah, Nvidia much closer here with 2.1, uh, 1.7. Yeah. So alphabet was a little off Amazon, a little off. Uh, so neither were entirely accurate. So, um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to rerun this, right? I can do these, you know, it's, I can, I can make the rules, uh, because I'm, I'm curious. I'm going to say, uh, please, uh, Oh, and I did make a mistake. I said using browse with Bing here. So it wasn't even accurate. So I'm going to change this now. I'm going to say, uh, using browse with Bing, please find the most up-to-date information as possible. I'm going to say specifically from May 14th, 2024, or as close as possible to that date. All right. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing, uh, and I'm going to take away the browse with Bing because that wasn't fair. I might have tripped up uh, perplexity here slightly. All right. So let's try this again with a little more uh, specifics in the prompting uh, to see how this goes. All right. Ready? And here we go. 
give chat GPT the head start since perplexity had the first one. So I'm just curious if this is going to change the outcome. So again, uh, chat GPT much faster this time and it's done. Uh, perplexity still going a little slower. Very, all right. Perplex perplexity, very slow there. So right now it's giving some information as of May, you know, May 1st. Uh, so let's go ahead and check chat GPT. Um, as, as we allow perplexity to finish perplexity, pretty slow here. All right. So Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Alphabet, Amazon, and it looks like our totals are pretty good now. Pretty good. So, uh, you know, NVIDIA now 2.1. So with a little more direct prompting, uh, chat GPT did a much better job. And also again, searching multiple sites. And it just so happens one of these sites, um, is the one that I actually used, right? So for some of these things it did, I think it was seven sites last time, this time it did three sites. Uh, so let's see if, uh, perplexity got it right this time. Uh, it did a pretty good job. So it said Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Alphabet, Amazon. Good. Still finishing. So a little slower here. Uh, and we have the pro toggle on, let's see the amounts 2.8, uh, 2.6, 2.1. So on the second run, when I gave more specific information, uh, chat GPT and GPT 4.0 were actually faster and a little more accurate. So pretty interesting. All right, let's do our last test here. And each time we're starting with a fresh, uh, kind of fresh, fresh one here. So now we're asking about the NBA finals. We're not going to give specifics. I'm going to take away the using browse with Bing. Uh, all right. So we're given perplexity, the head start here. Let's see how it performs. And let's see who gets it right as well. Okay. So they got it both done in about the same time. Uh, so let's see, first of all, if this is actually correct, what teams are still in here, I'm going to have to write it down. So, uh, it looks like we have, I'm going to write these down. So I don't have to keep going back and forth. So it looks like we have the thunder. We have the Mavericks. We have the Timberwolves. We have the nuggets. We have the Celtics, we have the Cavs, we have the Pacers, and we have the Knicks. All right, so I got my notes. So let's first check accuracy. All right, so we have Boston, Cleveland, New York, Indiana, Oklahoma, Dallas, Denver. Perfect. All right, so they got that. Uh, Boston, Cleveland, New York, Indiana, Oklahoma, Dallas, Denver. Okay, so from an accuracy perspective, all accurate. So here's here's the interesting part. So uh ChatGPT actually went one step further. And you'll see in this case, it didn't tell us how many uh, sources, but it did list at least two separate sources uh, down here. So we didn't get the normal dropdown. Uh, however, uh, ChatGPT gave us actually much more information. So let's see how accurate that information uh, even is, right? So let's bring this up a little bit. So it says Cat Celtics 3-1, Celtics 3-1. Let's see, 2-2 two two tie, 2-2 two two tie. It's pretty, pretty impressive here. Uh, Oklahoma city, let's see two to two tie and Denver two to two tie. So, you know, when we talk about, uh, the future of using large language models, right. Um, I think how we work, how we research, everything is going to change. And this is something I don't think anyone's really talking about, uh, because chat GPT or open AI didn't really talk about this at their announcement, but I use, uh, browse with Bing dozens of times a day, uh, inside of chat GPT. And I instantly noticed yesterday, not only was it much faster, but it was actually listing sources, you, you know, in a way that a perplexity would. So, you know, generally, you know, it didn't used to do that, um, unless you specifically asked, um, and you never really got that drop down. So we are starting to see already some under the hood improvements. And I think if I'm being honest, um, I think this might cut into, um, you, you know, that market share, that perplexity, uh, has started to carve out, uh, into, you know, Google with their Google's SGE. Uh, so something under the hood, I know this was a little bit longer of an AI in five, which turned into an AI in 15, but I think it's extremely important. Something that's happening under the hood at chat GPT. I hope this was helpful. If so, let me know, leave a comment. What do you want to see next? Also, please go to your sign up for that free daily newsletter and we'll see you back for another AI in 15, I guess. Thanks y'all.